Good morning and welcome to worship the second and last Sunday of Christmas before Epiphany. We begin with an order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. The reading for today comes from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been de destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had be believed in him, or marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. The gospel for today is taken from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming to the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, 
He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we all have received, grace upon grace. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I love words. I love poetry. I love hymnody. I am amazed by writers who capture feelings and ideas that make us say, yes, that's it, that's exactly it. I love the words people say. When we lived in Iowa, people talk just a little different than they do in Wisconsin. And I loved the little differences. They piqued my ears. For instance, people would start sentences with anymore. Anymore, it's hard to find someone without a cell phone. I love playing with words myself. It's one of my favorite parts of my job, arranging words in ways to say things that get attention, that comfort, that inspire, that challenge, that proclaim the gospel. When I taught elementary and middle school English, I would tell the kids, words are power. If you are a skilled wordsmith, you can make things happen. I love words. But here's the thing. My words can only do so much. My words can create pictures in people's minds, but ultimately they fly up into the air, in one ear, out the other, or they end up as one-dimensional marks on paper that may or may not be read. Human words don't manifest anything. But God's word does. God's word is the word that calls all things into being. God spoke over the formless void while a wind from God swept over the waters and from that nothingness, God called light and life into being. Today in the Gospel of John, we hear the other Christmas story. The one we're accustomed to hearing begins with people who live in houses, who have jobs and heartaches and spouses and fiancés and nosy neighbors and taxes and inns and animals. It begins in the established, already created world. The Gospel of John begins way before that. Before the Christ was born into creation, Christ was present at creation. Christ was the word that called all things into being. All things were called into being through him. And without him, not one thing was called into being. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus was the word. In him was light and life already. In him, through him, and with him, all creation was called by love to be. In him already, the creation that was born was destined to be saved by God's loving word, by God's redeeming word in Christ Jesus. And it's just all so awesome. It's hard to put into words. John attempts, he does a really good job with his um, praise of the word. He writes a hymn that attempts in human words to explain the mystery of the word made flesh for our salvation. Always on the second Sunday of Christmas, I find myself at a loss for words when it comes to the word made flesh. But here we go. An attempt at a few words about the mystery of the word made flesh. God in Christ is always creating, always calling into being, always speaking a saving word. Listen. The one who spoke creation into being spoke you into being. 
Think about that the next time you look at the sunset or the night sky or a flower and say, wow. Within Christ exists the mystery of the beginning and the end, death and resurrection, the first light when God said, let there be. When we take communion, when we were baptized, when Christ finds us on our darkest days, when Christ meets us in our neighbor, when Christ meets us in the word, God is rekindling the first light in us. When one day from death we rise, God will rekindle that first light again. The creator became creature in the baby Jesus. The creator became creature and forever changed creation. God is with us in the closest way because Jesus, with his feet walking earth's dusty roads and his hands lifting the earthen cup and his body dying on the cross and buried deep in the ground, rekindled something in creation. Now God is with us in bread and wine and every merciful thing done in the name of Christ. And God is with us even in death. And there is a light that shines in the darkness. The light is Christ and nothing, not even you fill in the blank, can overcome it. A light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Merry Christmas. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling, 
Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness, that we may live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring together the heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystem, ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance, from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and weary. Refresh those who labor upon the weight of pain or sickness. We pray those we know who are in need of your care, and we lift their names before you now. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your, in, your image in one another. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us upon grace, upon grace as we lift these all and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, we would be collecting the offering, our offering prayer. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive this blessing. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to have communion in the parking lot until 1115. So if you would like to come out to receive communion, I might not be outside. I'm going to be looking out the window and I'll see you come. So if you don't see me, still pull up and I'll come out. Um, with the elements for you and so you can do that also I this is a call for people who would be interested in reading for our service like Randy did today I haven't been asking people uh, specifically because I don't want to put anyone in the position where they feel like they have to say yes to something they're not comfortable with as far as coming in and being with people um, depending on whatever your your precautions that you are taking and so I would like you, if you would, if you would be willing to read either at a service like this or once we are joining back in person again, if you feel comfortable reading, please let me know. Even if you've never read before, 
let me know, send me an email, and I'll put together a list of people that are willing to do that. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I guess Wednesday is Epiphany, so um, there are lots of different traditions for Epiphany. I just, I always like to tell people that day is coming because otherwise it slips away and we don't think much about it. But Epiphany was the day that the star appeared in the east. Uh, in the newsletter, there are a couple of ideas for ways to observe that. I'm going to send out to the congregation a house blessing, which is an old Catholic tradition, but I think it's kind of a neat thing that uh, people can do. And so if you don't join us on our email, but you would like to receive a copy of that house blessing to do at your own home, just um, leave us a message, a personal message on the church Facebook page and with your email address, and I'll be sure to send that to you. Next week, we will still be online. We are going to meet as a council on January 14th to talk about plans for the rest of January, whether we'll continue to be online or be in person, and we'll keep you informed as to what is going on. But next week, we will continue to be online, so you can find us here at 1015. With that, have a wonderful week and a happy new year. Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.